Wow, that was quite a bit of uh, propaganda and lies. It's quite amazing uh, what we just heard. Uh, the United States welcomes uh, the opportunity to address the seriousness of weapons transfers into the conflict in Ukraine, which Russia started. Transfers uh, to the aggressor are enabling the largest invasion of Europe, in Europe, since World War II, prolonging the conflict, undermining the UN Charter, and endangering European security. Since the last briefing on this topic, we have new developments to share with the Council. In late 2023, Iran and Russia signed a contract for the supply of hundreds of missiles Russia needs to carry out its aggression in Ukraine. This past summer, Iranian personnel trained Russian military personnel on the use of Iran's Project 360 close-range ballistic missiles. This month, Russia received the first shipment of hundreds of these missiles from Iran. The missiles have a maximum range of 75 miles, and their deployment enables Russia to preserve its longer-range capabilities for use throughout Ukraine, deepening Russia's arsenal and giving Russia the ability to destroy more of Ukraine's infrastructure ahead of winter. Iran's transfer represents a dramatic escalation and a highly destabilizing development, one that is likely to increase the suffering of the Ukrainian people. This missile transfer is in addition to the thousands of UAVs Iran has sent to Russia since 2022, which Russian forces have used with devastating effect against Ukrainian civilians and civilian infrastructure. The partnership between Russia and Iran not only poses a threat to Ukraine and European security, it also directly enables Iran's destabilizing activities in the Middle East and around the world. In response to Iran's ongoing military support to Russia, including the recent delivery of ballistic missiles for use against Ukraine, the U.S. Department of the Treasury is designating 10 individuals and six entities based in Iran and Russia and identifying four vessels as blocked property that are enabling Iran's delivery of weapons components and weapons systems, including the UAVs and missiles, to Russia. Since the Kremlin launched its invasion of Ukraine, Russia has also imported dozens of ballistic missiles and more than 18,000 containers of munitions and munitions-related materiel from the DPRK in violation of Security Council resolutions that Russia itself supported just a few years ago. Russia has cynically abandoned its support for the principles of nonproliferation and has used its position on the Security Council to attempt to shield the DPRK from UN scrutiny of its unlawful nuclear and ballistic missile development programs. It is clear there is an urgent need to help Ukraine defend itself from missile strikes, attacks which undermine the principles of the UN Charter and threaten international peace and security, including, it seems, food security. The successful destruction of military facilities on Russian territory by our drones indicates that the Russian Federation's rear facilities are not protected against equipment created by Ukrainian engineers. This was stated in an interview with Radio NV by the co-founder of Drone UA, an Ukrainian expert in the field of unmanned technologies, Valery Yakovenko. The past few months, almost a year, was spent on Ukraine working, increasing the quantity and quality of its own equipment that can operate at remote distances and hit the rear facilities of the enemy's military infrastructure. And today we have confirmation that those developments that were predicted and stimulated by the Ukrainian state from Ukrainian entrepreneurs and companies are already reaching a certain apogee. In particular, damaging or reaching these objects that need to be destroyed, he said. According to the expert, today we can say that the range of destruction by Ukrainian technologies can be thousands of kilometers. And we see certain confirmation of this, that this is exactly what is happening in the swamps. The fact that military facilities are being hit, the fact that they are being hit successfully, indicates that the rear facilities of the Russian Federation, Unayan, are not protected against equipment created by Ukrainian engineers. And this is another fact that no technology stands still, Yakovenko said. He noted that the ecosystem of Ukrainian-made drones technologies is developing dynamically. And this once again demonstrates the fact that there are no safe places in the swamps. All military targets, according to the statement of our leaders, must be hit. And it is precisely Ukrainian equipment that can become the reason for this, the result of its use, the expert said. 
He also explained why enemy drones are almost invisible in some areas of the front. Enemy drones, especially when we talk about reconnaissance equipment, are used as spotters. For example, in the Kherson region, reconnaissance drones quite often spotted kamikaze drones that could fly through the Dnieper and harm civilians. When the Ukrainian military began shooting down such drones with kamikaze drones, the number of terrorist attacks against civilians using kamikaze drones from the enemy side decreased significantly. Therefore, it is critical to destroy such targets, the expert said.